It has been several months since we have continuously received dozens of reports of melting connectors on the RTX 4090, but no solutions were offered by Nvidia. It was mostly blamed on users who didn't insert their connectors properly into the GPUs as the new 12-pin power connector is very sensitive to movements. Due to this, even if the connector maintained contact with the GPU, it can't endure higher voltages and the result is a disaster that did not spare the connectors on the cables, GPUs and even PSUs in some cases. Finally, Nvidia has started working on a redesigned connector that will fix this problem without creating any compatibility issues with the already existing hardware. This is definitely one of the most necessary things because designing a brand new connector that won't fit the GPUs featuring the 12-pin connector won't be welcomed. This redesigned connector has some slight changes that will result in a better connection and will also eliminate and prevent a situation that results in melting. According to Igor's lab, Nvidia has been working on this connector with PCI SIG which is responsible for developing and maintaining the standard of peripheral connections. As a result, a newly designed connector is born which is named 12V2X6 which will now replace the 12VHPWR. This connector not only fixes the problem of melting but is also capable of supplying more power to the GPUs. The main identifier between the two here is the H plus marking on the older connector but the newer connector will feature H plus plus instead. Compared to the 12VHPWR connector which could supply up to 525 watts, this new connector can supply up to 600 watts through the connector itself and when combined with PCIe X16 slot on the motherboard, the total power supply can reach up to 675 watts. So definitely a good upgrade here. But let's talk about the changes we are going to see on the new 12-pin connector. Here the crucial change is done on the sense pins situated below the 12-pin connector that are responsible for carrying sideband signals. In the older version, these pins were just 0.45mm behind the outer edge of the header, but the actual final contact point was 3mm behind the edge. As a result, even when the connector was not fully inserted, into the GPU, the sense pins could still switch on the GPU even if the 12 pins in the main connector did not reach their target contact point on the thicker pins. So Nvidia fixed it by reducing the total length of the sense pins and moved the contact point even further. Therefore, in the new connector, the tip of the pin is now 1.7 millimeters behind the edge and now its contact point is shifted behind the tip of the thicker pins in the main connector. This will ensure that when the user inserts the connector into the GPU, the connector meets the target contact point on both sense pins and the thicker 12 pins in the main connector. In case if the connector is left loose, the connector won't make good contact with the sense pins and the GPU won't even turn on. This will prevent any overheating issues in the main 12-pin area which cannot endure a high power supply when the connection is not perfect. Apart from that, Nvidia has also made some slight changes to the connector plug where a 0.7mm thick shoulder situated below the sense pins is now removed in the new connector. It's still not clear why it did so but there must be some important reason for doing this. Now if you're wondering when the higher end RTX 40 car will come equipped with this new connector, I think it will take a couple of weeks. But surprisingly, Nvidia already did changes to the RTX 4070 Founders Edition which tells me that the RTX 4080 and 4090 will also see the change very soon. Let's hope that this fixes the melting problem entirely so that users won't have to hesitate to buy the RTX 4090. Now before moving on, if you are enjoying the content till now then consider subscribing to the channel. Here I cover the most interesting stories right after their breakout and all you need to do is click on the subscribe button so you never miss any videos again. Next up, we have AMD releasing even more CPUs in both Zen 3 and Zen 4 families. For the past few months, we have been seeing more and more CPU releases from AMD, whether we talk about Ryzen 7000 3D CPUs or even the latest Ryzen 5600X 3D which is planned to launch on 7th of this month. Now, 5600X 3D won't be available worldwide, but three more CPUs are coming soon which might hit the retail stores in every part of the world. One of them is the Ryzen 7 5700 which we saw a few days back and now AMD is planning an entry-level chip namely Ryzen 3 5100 that was recently seen on Gigabyte's official website. This CPU is currently listed under X570 motherboard CPU support lists and we can see all of its specs being detailed in the table. It will feature 4 cores and 8 threads clocked at 3.8 GHz of base frequency and 4.2 GHz of boost clock. The combined L2 and L3 cache size is 10 MB and it will be based on the same 7 nanometers process node as the other Ryzen 5000 CPUs. It is rated at 65 watts of TDP and of course, just like other Zen 3 based CPUs, it won't feature any integrated graphics. So it is going to replace the Ryzen 3 4100 and I believe it is going to cost below $100 considering the latest Ryzen 5000 CPU pricing. But things get interesting when we talk about the third CPU which is the first of its 
Skyn from AMD. It is the Ryzen 5 7500 which is going to launch this week for the AM5 platform. This is the first Ryzen 7000 CPU that won't come with integrated graphics and this is what the F denotes in its name. While some are criticizing AMD for copying Intel, but many are welcoming this naming convention as it avoids confusion. This report comes from a Korean retailer and we already have a few details about its specs. It is reported that this CPU will feature 6 cores and 12 threads while having its clock speeds 100 MHz lower than the Ryzen 7600. Other specs are supposedly identical. As for the price, it is reported to cost $10 lower than the Ryzen 7600 and that means it is going to cost somewhere around $210. At this price, it makes much more sense to go with the 7600 considering that the latter is superior in specs and also has integrated graphics. Ryzen 7500F should have been at least $30 to $40 cheaper than the 7600 considering that AMD can use IO dies with defective integrated graphics. This way, not only the defective IO dies can be used for making more CPUs which will benefit AMD but will also benefit the users who want to spend less than $200. So the CPU war is getting fiercer than before, especially in the sub $250 category where we have almost a dozen CPUs from both AMD and Intel that provide fantastic price to performance ratio. We now need to wait and see if Ryzen 7500F can beat the Core i5-13400F which will be its direct competitor. Until then you can watch these recent videos if you have missed them. Lastly, if you like the content then hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notifications for more upcoming videos and I will see you in the next one.